Hey friends, it's Elizabeth Morse with Planters Place. I am here today to talk to you a little bit about repotting orchids. So um, orchids can be kind of intimidating. I have tons of questions about them all the time. I am by no means an expert on orchids, but I am a cat lover and I've got a house full of kitties and orchids are, um, are not toxic to cats, so I tend to have quite a few of them around. And um, oftentimes people ask me, you know, how do, you, how do I get my orchid to bloom? Why isn't, it, um, why isn't it thriving? Do I feed it ice chips? When do I replant? So I thought I would cover a few of those things today um, because even though they are incredibly beautiful and known to be finicky, if you follow some, um, from some simple guidelines, they actually do really well and they don't require a ton of, of effort. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about um, is this little guy. And um, as you can see, it's a pretty small orchid, but it's got these crazy things crawling up here and you might think, oh, those are stems. They actually are roots and that is um, one of the best indicators that it's time to replant your orchid. Typically, I do that once a year. I try to do it after the holidays, early spring, um, and because orchids actually bloom only once a year, when you um, kind of put it on your calendar and make it a thing and just get it done, then you have great chances of having wonderful blooms and you don't forget about them. So as you can see, this was this was one of those little grocery store guys, and this pot is actually about a full size bigger than this pot. So what you do is you take a look at your orchid, and um, sometimes I should point out that if you get one as a gift, like from a florist or from um, a big box store, a lot of times they'll come in like a really pretty pot, and they'll have a sheet of moss all around the top, and the moss is really great, um, makes it look pretty, but you want to take it off right away. And the reason why is that the moss actually traps in moisture and the growing medium that orchids grow in is um, big chunky bark that we'll look at in a second. But um, when it stays moist, then it decomposes more quickly and um, the crazy roots of an orchid get clogged with, um, with the composted bark. It gets like dirt and they don't get enough air. Those roots don't. So, um, so the first thing you wanna look at when you're deciding to repot is if you've got any roots like this that are growing out either the top or sometimes they grow out the bottom, and that's definitely a sure sign. Um, the other thing is, is you want to acknowledge whether or not it's new to you. If you know when it was last repotted, um, then you're good for about a year. But if you don't, you wanna look for these roots. Um, and then you also uh, just kinda of wanna look at the overall condition of the plant. Like I can see some more, I can see a tiny stem starting down here. I don't know if you can see that which is great. Um, and you also are gonna go ahead and um, in this case, I've got a plastic pot and I can kind of massage it. Now this is watered about once a week. So these roots are still pretty pliable. Sometimes they will be stuck in the pot and you'll have to kind of, you'll kind of have to uh, like run a knife down the inside and, um, and gently try to tip them out. Um, but in this case, this one's pretty ready to go. I'm going to take this little guy off. This is just a support stem that came with it, which there's nothing to support right now, so we don't really need it. And then I'm gonna remove this. And, okay, so anytime that you see a black root, we're gonna to wanna to get rid of that guy. We're gonna to want to use really sharp scissors because you wanna make clean cuts. And if your root ball is really dry or sticky, you can actually, I've, I've got a bowl of water here and I could soak that. I don't think I'm gonna need to with this guy because it's pretty okay. But I'm just gonna start trimming off these little sections. You want your roots to be light colored, white, ideally. Sometimes if you've got a white, like you can see this one right here, white with a little bit of green at the end, that is new growth and that's great. So we're going to get, oh my gosh, this one's actually packed in moss. That's bad. So we're gonna get all that out of here. And the goal is just to gently loosen the roots. I'm getting it all over the table here. But you can see this is definitely not chunky bark. This is, so. Okay, so we're gonna snip off that guy. And it probably would have been smart for me to uh, to put down some newspaper, but it's okay. This isn't a big deal. It's just a little bit messy. Okay. Now, once you have gotten 
your roots detangled. And see, this one's black too. I'm going to snip that. And you can see that. I don't want to take away the whole root ball, but um, I'm going to get the ones off that are not viable. And this would be a good time to also trim some, um, some leaves if you had any that needed to be trimmed. On this one, I don't. They all look pretty good. So I've got... Cut that too. So that's quite a bit less. I'm going to give it a little dip here in the water. Um, and then just rinse it off. And then I'm going to gently stick it in the pot here. So like that. Now, um, you want to have a, a growing medium that's specifically for orchids. Uh, I like this one. It's from Better Grow. You can find it pretty much anywhere. But um, if you have a favorite orchid shop, you can also find some really nice growing medium. And you'll see, this is what it looks like. It's really crumbly. Definitely different than what we saw in the stuff that we pulled out. And... So we're going to gently fill in. And again, as a reminder, when you're choosing a pot to replant your orchid, you really just want to go up just one size because they like a snug fit. They don't like to be, you know what, that is, that stinks because that was a really good root, but it was really bent and cracked. So I probably should have gotten that a little bit more submerged in water, made a little more pile. Anywho, we're going to keep filling in. And you can see some of these are really big chunks for a pretty small plant. So I use a wooden spoon and just kind of try and work these down. You see, it takes a little bit of patience. You can't just cram it in there, um, but it really isn't hard to do. And as these um, orchids grow over the year, this planting medium will break down just like any as you water and, um, and feed these roots, but it also provides just the right amount of air in the root system so that you don't have root rot. And while I'm finishing up here, I'll just give you uh, another little bit of info. I have so many people ask me about watering their orchids, and they say, well, I should just put, you know, I was told that I should put just a few ice cubes um, around the top and let those soak in, and, um, and that's the way to do it. Um, that is actually not the way to do it, and the reason why is these are tropical plants, so they really don't like to be cold even at all, and dropping an ice cube, while that might be an appropriate amount of water, uh, it, it does not make the plant happy. So the way that you want to water them is you saturate it, you make sure that you've got either a hole in the bottom for it to drain, or like I have one upstairs that doesn't have a drainage hole, I saturate it, I let it sit for a few seconds, and then I do this and I just pour the water back out. And that's it. And then I leave it. Um, it. Really, I go about a week, sometimes two, depending on the size of the plant. This little guy will dry out a little bit more quickly. Um, just give it another little push around here to make sure I've got everything. Awesome. So when I go um, put this back up in its window that it likes, I am going to, um, first of all, saturate it, let it drain a little bit, and um, and then I'm going to leave it for probably about two weeks. Uh, normally I would water about weekly, but um, if you leave it about two weeks, it really encourages those roots to settle and get in there into that new mix and um, will make your orchid very happy. I hope that that has been helpful information to you, and um, we'll see you next time with spider plants. If you enjoyed these gardening tips, subscribe to our channel so you can get updates on new videos and stay in the know about all things gardening. Click the red subscribe button below. See the description below for more information about how to connect with us on plantersplace.com, Facebook, and Instagram.